Hello and welcome to lesson number 12. We will talk about QGIS server today. So in the past, we always asked ourselves, okay, how can we consume data? And of course, how can we push data to the internet? And when we we're talking about pushing data to the web, it was always with static files. That means we exported um, a layer to a GeoJSON file and we served it using leaflet in our example using qgis to map and if you take a closer look we are not starting with with qgis today because today we will go a little bit into some back end software thingy programming and i might lose quite a lot of audience during the video because we will take a look look at different commands here we will deal with the terminal and with the virtual a machine with a virtual box machine so where will we start we will not take care of the lessons described in the in the example in the written tutorial we will take care we're using or we will take care of the um, qgis server installation using pole shape lease instruction because it's way more simpler and way more faster to understand how this works and it will enable you to um, to easily publish your own WMS services, your own WFS services or WF services. Uh, so you will be uh, faster in delivering content to the web from your from your project, from your client, whatsoever. So uh, we will stick to this uh, tutorial here. And um, yeah, how I'm doing it, uh, I'm using a virtual machine based on Ubuntu 2004. So this is a guest machine. Um, guest editions is installed already. So in VirtualBox, I can easily communicate with the with the server engine here. And so I have a file manager to uh, to um, copy files, QG, QGIS project files from my computer, which is a Mac here in this case, to the virtual machine, the server. And the server will then take this QGIS file and stream it as a web service, as a web map service, as a web feature service. But what will we need for this? So we'll, we'll start a little bit with int introductional patterns from uh, from the um, from the tutorial. So as you can see, I'm not on my Mac, so I will now log into my server. And there we are, Rickly at GI at QGIS server. That's a machine. That's my local IP. I'm using five gigabyte, four gigabytes of RAM, I think. So quite a simple machine, single core, nothing really special. So first of all, of course, let's do an update, right? Let's see whether there's something new on the map. Does not look like. Then we will need the new PG and software properties command that was also listed in the um, in the um, needed packages for the uh, QGIS installation on, on an Ubuntu machine. We'll just take this up here. So this has uh, worked fine as well. And we need to add this the uh, key. And we will add the repository to the virtual machine. That takes care of the QGIS.org Ubuntu minus LTR because we are using the long-term re um, long release. This is done as well. So, and now we will add or we will get the update. And last but not least, we'll take care of QGIS server, Python QGIS to add some Python plugins maybe afterwards. Then we will need an Apache 2. That is the server content in the end, right? Then we will uh, use the fast CGI support, lib Apache 2 mod FCGID. And we need, well, I'm using curl just to uh, test it on the server so copy paste everything here let's go this will now add about 1500 megabytes so stay tuned i'll pause the video for a moment so and now the installation part is finished and we will now switch over to paul shapley's uh, installation documentation by first of all going to the sites available folder here so cd sites available there we are let's have a look what is in there 
there's a 0, 0, 0 minus default.conf and we will take this default conf to create our our initial website, right? So sudo nano 00. Bam. There we are. And we will now copy this text in there. So we we'll remove a little bit of the com of the comments. You see, I'm a simple man. I don't use the fancy old school tools. I'm just trying to get my way around. So I will simply copy paste this here. There we are. Should work fine. Let's press save. Yes. I would like to save it. And now we will enable the the um, extension. Yeah, well, that, that was great. Then this was enabled as well already. Let's start the Apache. Now let's see whether something works already, right? So let's go to the to the IP address of my server, which is this one into my in my local network that's cgi bin qgis maps of fcgi service wms version 130 and we will not take care of this year already let's have a look how this works well works at the moment right so we will now have a look what else can we do now Streaming content means you need something to stream, right? So something that needs to be copied to the server and you would like to work with that. So let's have a look on QGIS and the project I've created. Well, this is not working anymore, so let's remove this layer. So we were doing some analysis in the last lessons where we, where we talked about suited buildings, so what buildings are, might fit the criteria of a client. This was the result, right? And I, I stripped it down to the very core, right? So uh, just the buildings, nothing else. And let's have a look what I've dis defined here in the buildings. For each feature or for each layer, you will have that item QGIS server. And there's a lot of information going on which you can fill, right? So you should fill in a building, uh, the short name for the layer, which is buildings in our case. You can add an URL for the legend and so on, an attribution, many more uh, I, properties. We'll just press on OK. And let's have a look on the project properties as well. So open up the project properties and here you have something called QGIS server. So there's also a short name, a title, I filled it in. I will use the, an I will use an advertised extended means. I'm not restricting the user, but I say, well, if you would like to use it, use this extent. The data is designed for this extent, right? So I'm saying use current canvas extent, which is this, okay. Um, anything else? I don't have layouts, layers, not so ever. So there's not so much more, but now the important thing is coming up. WMTS capabilities. I say, well, I would like to have everything published here. And I would like to publish the, the buildings layer as a WFS as well with a precision. So decimal, right? Uh, decimal uh, numbers of eight. That means that the uh, geometries will be cut off after eight decimals. And uh, I don't want to let the users update, insert, or delete these uh, um, this item WCS. I don't have have um, something like a rasa in my in my in my uh, project, so I don't have the possibility or the ability to, to to stream it in WCS. Test configuration. That's always quite quite interesting to test it first. You might know this if you published already some some services from ArcGIS. So you can test the, the some of the, the service definition <laughs> to to speak with S words. And so we start checking Q server all names and short names of layers are unique. All short names are well formed and so on. This is not a guarantee that will, it will work, but it will somehow guide you through, right? So if you see some errors already there, just go and um, fix this or try to fix this. 
take a look at gist.stack exchange if you can see any errors or if you observe any errors paste them um, post them there and uh, wait for an answer so just press on ok uh, i will save it now and what's happening now so we are still on the machine on my on my local machine i now need to take the project to the server Therefore, I'm using a virtual box file manager. You can do this as well with an FTP client. So if you have somewhere a web space where, or you have a dedicated server somewhere, just use the FTP client and um, save the files or copy the files to your local drive. So once again, I will use a file manager. So I need to create a session here. Once again, with my credentials, create session, there I am. So I'm um, here at users, record a clinger and go to projects. This, are, this is my layer. So I will use these two items because I need to copy the data as well. And um, always make sure if you, if you have a look at the projects, make sure that the paths are relative to each other. By saying so, I mean open projects, properties. Go to general and say save paths relatively because otherwise it will look on the local path and so i don't have access to this folder where is the data and so he gets a little bit confused but once again go here and uh, we will go to home go to my folder i'll simply copy all the files over there so lesson 12.qgs take into account if you store a file if you store a qgis project by default, it will create a QGZ file. That means that is somewhat a zip version. And inside the zip, I think there's a QGS file as well. But make sure if you save it, select the old file format, QGS, store it, and you will be fine. If you copy a QGZ folder, I don't know whether this will work, but stay to the, stay to, or stick to the QGS and you will be fine. So file is over. Our file is copied, so let's close this and let's have a look here on the on uh, my system cd home slash rickly. Let's see what is there. There are the two files, right? So and so, but now let's go over to Paul Shapley's example. What he was saying, well, if you need to do it properly then he works with some he works with some um, um with some i uh, know uh, how, how to call it um links to the files i don't think that we will need this i think we can work right away with the current setup but we do have a problem still because if you check the uh, if you check the um, owner of the data, that's me. It's Rickly. So we need to change this, right? sudo w data w data. Oh, let's take all. Let's check. It has not worked. Of course, because we need to make this. Now the data is belonging to the right person, which is the Apache server person, www data. Um, so let's go back to my server. No. Nope. There and say and map equals slash home slash Rickly slash lesson 12.qgs. And there it is my buildings in Swellendam um, web mapping service so we have a lot of things going on so we have some CRS's enabled uh, there's a layer called buildings it will take this one here the the URL as it is and let's go over to QGIS create a new WMS connection if you don't know how to do this check the last lesson 11 I'll drop the link above and so we have local server and just paste the url it's okay let's open this up let's have a look here local server there we are so we will add the project to the or we will add this service to the project and now you can see that the service is there it seems a little bit different so the styling is a little bit different right but as as said 
you still see all the items. And now the good things comes into place. First of all, you get in a legend. Cool, great. So the legend is pre-rendered for you. And um, but let's have a look here whether we can fetch some data as well. Let's have a look. Oh my goodness. No, that's the wrong layer. We need to go here. But once again, you will get the feature ID, and that's so cool because it also streams the WFS for you. So you get the feature information as well, right? So let's have a look once again. Top down, we will go with all the layers. No, all layers. Top down. Let's press here. So we should get two layers, right? So first of all, here the suited property client XYZ. Swell and dump, building number 60. Let's go here. This is the buildings layer. Full ID 60. Here we have the feature ID. So we still get the same idea. And once we are here, you can also check the feature and get the feature information you will need. So um, and this, is, this is just awesome because you can now work with the... Um, you can now work with a streamed layer. Uh, you can publish it on the web. You can make it in, available for the world outside. And this was not so hard like if you're going on and, and try to work with with some some websites or something like that that's quite uh, I don't know it was five or six commands so it is it is easy to achieve but yet you need to have the infrastructure so you need to have a server you need to have uh, the connection to it you need to be available uh, able to to install some pl uh, some some um, additional packages um, this is quite a hurdle for so, some people so that's why i said i will maybe lose one or the other uh, in this tutorial but in the end um this is in this is in first impression of QGIS server i'm totally aware that there if you really would like to make it production ready you should need to keep in, in mind security reasons um URL management, so who can access, who, who has access to, to the services as well. And I'm now running on VirtualBox, so everything is done on my machine. And if you're behind a proxy or something else, things can get complicated quite easily. So don't be too, don't be too anxious to try this out because this will bring you further in the, in the world of GIS because you, you start to, to understand what you are talking about. And um, and if you need if you need support, always trust to the people around you. There are administrators out there who can who can help you. There are Apache specialists out there who can help you. So um, if you would like to make it production ready, don't be scared. Just start, and by tiny steps, you will get onto the top of the ladder. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, um, questions, remarks, or if you have seen an error, just drop me a line down below. Otherwise, subscribe, take care, and goodbye.